Liquid medication used to always come in a bottle, and you had to pour your dose with a steady hand into a spoon. Today, many medications and supplements come inside small, food-safe casings that are easy to swallow and portable. Soft gel capsules. Many types of products come in gel capsules, from prescription drugs to health supplements such as fish oils. Many of these medicine fills go bad if exposed to oxygen, so the gel cap, besides being convenient, also serves as a protective barrier. Every ingredient in both the gel cap and the medicine fill inside undergoes extensive testing for purity. The first test phase checks for bacterial contamination. Lab technicians dissolve the ingredient in solution, apply it to a food source in a Petri dish, then incubate the dish for 72 hours to encourage any existing bacteria to grow. Then they draw samples and examine them under a microscope. If those samples are bacteria-free, the ingredient moves onto the second phase of testing, which checks for contaminants such as lead, arsenic, mercury, and cadmium. This machine, called a spectrometer, injects the ingredient solution into a plasma flame, then, by reading the changes in light wavelengths, analyzes the chemical composition. If the ingredient is contaminant-free, it gets the go-ahead. The gel cap is made entirely of natural ingredients. Gelatin, derived from beef bones, palm oil glycerin, and purified water. The proportions are top secret. An industrial blender combines the three ingredients to a uniform consistency, then heats the mixture to 80 degrees Celsius. A vacuum sucks out the air bubbles, as this now-ready gel material flows into a holding tank. Simultaneously, they prepare the medicine fill, in this case, vitamin D. They combine it with soybean oil to adjust the potency to the specified strength. Meanwhile, they maintain the gel cap material in the holding tank at 60 degrees Celsius to prevent it from prematurely solidifying. Even the hose leaving that tank is wrapped in heater tape to keep the gel liquid. A separate hose feeds the vitamin D solution from another holding tank down to the production floor as well. This hose doesn't require heating because vitamin D and soybean oil don't solidify when cool. On the production line, two stations simultaneously spread a thin layer of molten gel across a cooling drum. The gel hardens into a solid yet malleable sheet, about the thickness of cardboard. Each sheet passes over a rotating die with capsule-shaped cavities. Just before the two gel sheets come together, pumps inject the required quantity of vitamin D solution into each cavity, the pressure pushing the gelatin into the cavity. At the same time, the machine heats the gel sheets so that when they meet, they adhere to each other, forming full capsules with the vitamin D solution sealed inside. In the final second, the dye's sharp edges slice the gel caps free and they fall to a conveyor belt below. At this point, the filled gel caps contain a fair bit of moisture, so they're quite soft. If they'd lay on a surface too long, they'd flatten, so the conveyor belt whisks them very quickly into a rotating drum, where they tumble in slightly cool, dry air for about three hours. This removes enough moisture to make the gel caps hard enough to lie on a surface without flattening. After exiting, the gel caps move into a second dryer, where, spread out on trays this time, they dry for about 36 hours. After that, the gel caps are hard enough to be safely packaged. The gel caps, the ones being packaged here contain flax oil, travel down a series of vibrating plates which progressively line them up in single file. As they pass by, electronic eyes count out the number of capsules per bottle, triggering the filling mechanism to collect that quantity and release it into an empty bottle. The next station applies a plastic twist cap. Then the bottles move onward, each one plowing directly into the center of an adhesive-backed label, which rollers then apply around the sides. Before shipping, the Quality Control Lab tests random samples from the production batch to verify that the gel caps meet all specifications. It's a playground staple.
a stationary ride-on cartoon animal that bounces up and down and rocks back and forth, courtesy of a huge spring underneath secured into the ground. The bouncy coil base is what gives this type of playground equipment its name, a spring rider. The spring rider is a playground favorite. To withstand years of rambunctious riders, it has to be solid and durable. Yet for a toddler to be able to rock back and forth, it can't be too heavy. That's why the spring is made of thick steel and the animal of lightweight aluminum. That sand core is comprised of two halves, each made with an aluminum mold, duck-shaped in this case. Workers fill it with sand and adhesive mix that sets into a solid block. They insert several steel support rods, fill to the top, and even out the surface. Then expose two hooks they'll grab to extract the core half, once the sand hardens in about 20 minutes. Meanwhile, other workers use an aluminum pattern to make each half of the duct casting mold. After applying a powder release agent to prevent sticking, they cover the pattern with a sieved mixture of sand and clay. They mount a frame around the pattern to contain the sand as they add more and more, repeatedly packing it down in all areas with a pneumatic ramming tool. Then they remove the frame and cover the sand with a wooden board. This provides a hard surface for the press, which now applies the weight of about four mid-size SUVs. Then they flip the mold over and remove the pattern which formed the mold cavity. The sand is now so firmly compacted that it holds the shape. One half of the sand mold has channels through which the molten metal will flow into the cavity. Workers now position several six millimeter thick foam spacers in the cavity and place half of the core on top of them. The spacers elevate the core, creating a six millimeter cavity between core and mold. The other half of the core goes on top. After placing spacers on top of that to create a six millimeter gap on this side as well, they carefully lower the other half of the sand mold. Now they're ready to cast the duck. The melting point of aluminum is 590 degrees Celsius. However, they heat it much higher, to 760 degrees, so it'll flow faster and fill the entire cavity before beginning to solidify. They pour the metal through holes on top. It flows through the runners into the mold cavity, which is that six millimeter gap surrounding the duck-shaped core. About 20 minutes later, the metal has cooled and solidified. They break the mold apart on a vibrating sieve, releasing the aluminum duck and shaking out the core sand through a hole at the bottom of the duck. After cutting off excess aluminum that hardened in the runners, they grind down the seam, which formed in between the two halves of the mold. Next, they weld on aluminum handles for the child to grip when riding. These handles are cast in sand molds, just like the duck. Workers grind down the weld and any sharp edges, making the entire surface nice and smooth. Next, a coat of polyester powder in bright rubber ducky yellow. Then a 20 minute trip through an oven to bake the coating, making it ultra durable. Now, delicately airbrushed with a urethane enamel paint, the details that bring Mr. Duck to life. His feet, wings, bill, and eyes. The thick coil that makes this a spring rider is made of a flexible type of steel. They bolt a steel spacer plate to it, then hide the bolts under an aluminum cover. After attaching a footrest, steel again, they bolt the duck to the plate. All these parts, like the duck, are painted with baked-on polyester coating. The spring bolts to a concrete block buried underground. Ducky and Friends are designed to withstand even the harshest winters, letting children enjoy a little spring all year round.